evening. Um, we do have our secretary absent this evening, so Mr. Chair, will you act as our secretary today? Thank you. Please call the roll. Okay. Uh, all the way today. Present. Mary Hilton. Um, Hubler is present. Adam Lipinski. Here. <laughs> Chair Ross is excused. Amy Servio. Here. Terry Spencer, I understand, will be a few minutes late. We have uh, five minutes. Right? Four minutes. Thank you. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda for March 25th? So moved. Any support? Support. I have a motion by Mrs. Servio and support by Mr. Lipsky. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have presentations. Teacher of the Year recognition. Thank you. Good evening. You really know how to throw a party. This is a big turnout. <laughs> this is great. And I get to kick it off with recognizing uh, some of our great teachers in Lance Cruz. Uh, during this time of the year, we have teachers in buildings represented, or um, I should say nominated to represent their buildings as the teacher of the year. So we're here to recognize uh, many of those folks this evening. Two of our building teachers of the year could not make it this evening, so I'd like at least to recognize them by saying their name and read some brief comments from their principals. And the first person I'd like to recognize that couldn't be here this evening is Jamie Rose, who's a kindergarten teacher at Yax Elementary School. Her principal, Mrs. Darlington, wrote, Jamie Rose is an incredible educator. She is a true asset to Yax Elementary Jamie has a natural way of connecting with students, staff, and families. She always has a smile on her face and her students and peers know she genuinely cares for them. That's Jamie Rose. Our next teacher of the year would be representing Atwood Elementary School, another kindergarten teacher, Beth DeMarzo. Her principal, Mrs. Furman, wrote, Mrs. DeMarzo is a caring, creative, and passionate educator. She is always working to meet the needs of every student in her class and goes above and beyond to create a memorable kindergarten experience for her students. Anytime you walk into her room, you are sure to find several smiles, lots of learning, and teamwork at every table. Beth DeMarzo is a true asset to Lance Cruz and to the Atwood Elementary School community. That's Mrs. DeMarzo Atwood. <laughs> Keeping with the elementary theme and introducing the Teacher of the Year from Karkinord is the principal, Mrs. Schapansky. Good evening, everybody. My name is Angela Schapansky, and I am truly honored to be here this evening to recognize Elaine Richardson as the Teacher of the Year for Carpenter. Elaine truly is the kind of person, if you're a parent, you want her to be your child's teacher. If you're a teacher, you want her to be on your team and to be that colleague. And if you're a principal, she's the kind of teacher that you truly want to have within your building. Um, I, Elaine has taught for 22 years in Monte Cruz. And in that time, she served on several different committees. She's worked on the science committee, the math committee, um, the writing committee within the district. At the building level, she's been part of the school improvement team. In the past, she has worked as the FSI, or facilitator of school improvement um, chair. She's also an integral part of our PBIS team that we have in the building. And even more so than all of those different accomplishments that she has, you know, she can put on her resume, is just truly her character as a person. And it's her character that I believe is the reason that the staff has nominated her for this honor. Um, she is just such a caring and compassionate person. She seeks out students in the morning and she sees them coming in and you can just tell that they're having a rough day. She'll put her arm around them, check in, just to make sure that their day gets off to that right start. Um, she steps up and you know, helps out her colleagues. She truly is a team player. 
You know, if someone's having a, having a tough day, you know, she'll take that student into, her, into their classroom and say, hey, you know, come in here for a little bit. You know, we've got a little extra. Give that teacher, you know, just a little extra support. and just truly goes above and beyond for everyone that she encounters. So, Elaine, congratulations. introduce our next teacher of the year is Mr. Williams, principal at Tenniswood Elementary School. Good evening, everyone. Positive reciprocity. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. You know, I was actually told that uh, we would be wearing t-shirts in support of our Teacher of the Year. I've officially been pumped. I normally wear shirts and ties, so excuse me. <laughs> now, I'm actually here to talk about Mrs. Gorney. Now, if you're familiar with the movie Hitch, she's like my Will Smith. This is my <laughs> first year in the elementary. I've been secondary for, for almost 20 years at this point. And she would volunteer for things that I didn't know were necessary. So in my mind, I'm thinking, Okay, I'll be supportive, ha <laughs> ha, thank you. But in the end, it's like she's that person behind the door. When I need a pen, she's right there, just putting it in my pocket, like, oh, it's right there. She's always been that person. She volunteers for a lot of things. She's very supportive in the building. Uh, she's very forthright as well. Now, <laughs> luckily I have copious amounts of confidence because she is very forthright and she speaks her mind, but she, she kind of, smiles at the end, like you see the smile now. She, <laughs> she always finishes with a smile, so I love it. Um, she also, um, in addition to those things, uh, she always has a guy, be it getting us free supplies for our gardens, <laughs> free t-shirts for the entire building, or now even seat cushions. She always has a guy giving us free stuff, <laughs> which I love, but it also, at the same time, I'm ambivalent because she has a guy, so in the event that I don't say what she likes, there might be a guy for that. <laughs> uh, finally, I, I really just would like to say how much I appreciate her. She lucked out with a smaller class this year, but based on the challenges and some of the needs of our kids, she's basically working for each kid, it's maybe an average of two and a half kids. So she's servicing about 63 kids in her room, and we greatly appreciate that. We have a lot of teachers here who I want staff to do the same thing, but you see they're all here in support of Jen Gorney. So thank you. later for yeah. tennis one. <laughs> and next to introduce the Lance Cruz Public Schools Elementary Teacher of the Year is the principal from Green Elementary School, Mrs. Karen Nelson.
Good evening, everyone. Um, I have a, more than just a few words, so just bear with me. It is truly a pleasure to congratulate all the nominees. I know many of them personally. And I get the honor, though, of talking about Pam Wolsey's. She's been teaching for over 25 years. The last 17 have been at Green as a kindergarten teacher. And I've had the pleasure of working for her for the last six. Every year that I've known Mrs. Olsey's, I've observed her promoting a positive school experience for all of her students, both current and former students, as well as her parents. Please just take a moment and in your head, reflect on the qualities of your favorite teacher. I can almost guarantee you that the qualities I'm gonna share with you about Mrs. Olsey's will be the same ones that just popped into your head. If you thought of someone who's positive, dedicated, compassionate, kind, encouraging, but most of all a memory maker, you have an idea of what Mrs. Olsey's, Mrs. Olsey's. Due to time constrictions, I'm just gonna highlight a few of her qualities for you. Personally, I believe Mrs. Olsey's most outstanding quality is her ability to create and maintain relationships with her students, staff, and parents. It is a proven fact that if a student can connect with one positive staff member in school, they are more likely to be excited to come to school every day, which in turn increases their ability to achieve academically over the course of their entire school career. Once a relationship is established with Mrs. Olsey's, it's very rarely broken and she has many families here tonight that speaks right to this. Currently, Mrs. Olsey sponsors an after-school group called Be Inspirational. This group is upper elementary girls. Many of them are former kindergarten students. They meet once a week from January to May. During their meetings, students incorporate exercise, self-esteem building, and community service projects all into one. They have visited area nursing homes on a Saturday, to drop off these cute little tic-tac-toe games that they've made, and they actually play with the residents there, all under Mrs. Olsey's direction. In honor of a former student who lost her battle with cancer, Mrs. Olsey's attends and is a financial supporter of the Rainbow Connection. It's a fundraiser that's held every year in the student's honor. One of the parents of the student stated the following, you are such a warm and loving teacher. You will always hold a special place in my heart. My children all loved you. She also gathers donations of coloring books and crayons each year and drives them to Children's Hospital of Michigan. She feels it's important for children who are battling illnesses that keep them from attending school to receive a little pick-me-up and a little ray of sunshine. <laughs> Mrs. Olsey's always gets down to students' level when she's speaking to them and is always there with encouraging words, a big smile, and a hug. According to one of her students, Mrs. Olsey's loves me and all the kids. She lets us hug her or we can give her a high five. I always hug her, and I loved making ice cream out of snow. <laughs> also, every spring, when seniors are getting ready to graduate, several of them come to visit their most favorite teacher to thank her for all she did and to tell them what they plan to do post-graduation. Student and parent relationships are very important to Mrs. Olsey's, but so are her staff relationships. Mrs. Olsey's has reached out to a staff member at Green whose granddaughter is seriously, seriously ill and lives out of state in Wisconsin. Mrs. Olsey's, with the assistance of other staff members, paid for a hotel costs for the staff member and her husband so they could spend the time with their granddaughter and they did not have to worry about the hotel bill. Mrs. Olsey's is truly a memory maker. She makes the rig rigorous kindergarten curriculum fun for all. She is very crafty at creating events for her students where learning concepts and memories intersect. For example, when teaching her kindergartners about the life cycle, she purchases chick eggs, incubators, and all the materials that go along with having chick eggs hatch in the classroom setting. Her students, as well as other green students in all the classrooms, are able to see the life cycle process and document the incubation period of the chicks. She also arranges to come into the building late at night and on the weekend in order to make sure the chicks have the best chance to hatch. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> other favorite memories for students include a Mother's Day tea, making ice cream out of snow, celebrating the 100th day of school, participating in a traditional Thanksgiving meal, and her documentation of the entire school year through pictures. <laughs> Lastly, the students in Mrs. Olsey's classroom are challenged and encouraged to make the most of their learning every day. 
Mrs. Olsies utilizes a variety of instructional methods in order to meet the needs of each of her students. Students always feel a sense of belonging while in her classroom and trust her to encourage them with a concept that might be learning, that might be difficult for them to learn. When you walk into Mrs. Olsey's classroom, you'll see a very welcoming, safe, supportive, respectful, and encouraging learning community. Room 104 is one of the happiest rooms at Green Elementary. It is a room where students feel special and important. Thank you, Mrs. Olsey's, for all you give to Green Elementary every day. The student body, staff, and parents of Green are very lucky to have you on staff. Thank you for allowing me the time to share the things I love about Mrs. Olsey's. Next, to introduce the Middle School Teacher of the Year for Lance Cruz Public Schools, the Principal of Middle School East, Mrs. Nina Davis. So I was going to apologize ahead of time for the length of my speech, but thank you, Mrs. Nelson. <laughs> Johnson has had a tenure here at Lions Foods for over 31 years, and she is retiring this year. So I have to make sure I do due diligence tonight with my honoring of Ms. Johnson. I thought about what to say um, about Ms. Johnson, and I thought I could use my own words, but then I thought, what better words to use than her own words about education and the words of her colleagues and her students. So I'm going to talk to you first. Ms. Johnson's philosophy of education, she states, has always been to do what's best for kids. I want all my students to come away from a year with me as their teacher, feeling confident that they can manage and understand content in any class. After I had my own children, I added an additional component. How would I want my children to feel in the classroom, and what would I like them to experience? Basically, I want students to feel safe and excited to be in my class. I feel that if I am excited and enjoy what is happening, then so will my students. She was then asked about equity. What is equity in a classroom meeting? She said, I think an equitable classroom means that every student gets what they need. I don't keep it a secret that I'm not fair because every kid needs something different at different times. I talk to my students. Each student gets the same opportunity to be successful. For some, that means more time, different instruction, and I try to make that happen for them as often as possible. From her colleagues, Ms. Johnson has been a teacher over 31 years. Her name is well known around the middle school East community and district. Many students and parents, who some are now former students, keep in contact with their favorite English teacher. Mrs. Johnson begins building relationships with her students from the very first time they walk through her door. She takes time to get to know each student on a personal level and find ways to connect. 
Ms. Johnson is also well known by the Middle School East parent community. As a member of the Middle School East staff, Ms. Johnson has also mentored many new and seasoned teachers. Her warm, inviting personality has allowed her to build great lasting relationships with students, parents, and colleagues. Ms. Johnson's classroom is one in which students, all students are engaged. Whether she is dressing up to relate to the day's activity, last week she was pronoun girl, <laughs> or creating hands-on games for the students to learn the, their vocabulary, Ms. Johnson is always finding new ways to enhance her students' learning experience. So from two of her students, her first student said she always will help you, whether it's with academics or with something personal. One thing I really like about Ms. Johnson is that she doesn't always teach the same way. Sometimes she will teach through notes on the whiteboard or even on the projector. I like the way she, she does this because she realizes that not all students learn the same way. Another student said, I think that Mrs. Johnson should be teacher of the year because she makes friends with all of her students. I am always excited to see Ms. Johnson and love her class. Mrs. Johnson likes to bring her shy, stu shy students out of their shell. And not unlike me, many people have made lots of new friends, new memories, and new ideas for writing by this. And last but not least, I not only have the honor of being her principal here to present this tonight, but I'm also a former parent. Ms. Johnson had my daughter six years ago. As I was leaving the house, I told my daughter where I was coming, and I said, what would you say about Ms. Johnson? She said, Mom, make sure they know the passion and excitement that she brings to the classroom, because that's the one thing I truly remember to this day is how excited she made English for me. So with that, Ms. Johnson. <laughs> this evening to introduce the high school teacher of the year for Lance Cruz Public Schools is the interim principal at Lance Cruz High School, Mrs. Tricia Lewis. Good evening. I would like to introduce the district teacher of the year, Terry Bundy. She is our AP teacher over at Lance Cruz High School. Um, she's also the teacher leader of the social studies department, and I have to say she's kind of the, like the unofficial mom of the social studies department. She always makes sure everyone's okay. If there's a new Morzano piece for teacher evaluation, she goes and makes sure that everyone's okay. They're on the right page. Um, she's also helped me a lot because she's on the school improvement team. Um, she works with me a lot with making sure we have the right initiatives in our plan and executing them within our uh, building. She also um, is a mother of two beautiful young ladies, a wife, to also a teacher, and he's also a varsity coach, so coach, as you know, he's gone a lot. <laughs> um, she is also involved um, in the band a lot. She's actually an alumni of Lance Cruz High School graduate, um, which is pretty cool that she's come back and done so much here at the high school. But I have to say, the one thing, usually mid-June in the schools, it's pretty empty, right? No, you'll find Terry there, because she's getting ready, setting up her classroom for summer school. She's there helping our incoming freshmen get their math, algebra one skills ready for their freshman year in high school. Then you'll also see Terry back in August with band helping out, or just coming in to fix her room, because it has to be right on point with every detail. Um, but she's just an amazing person overall. She's the first person, if you need something, she's there. She's the one person that you can always go to um, in our building that's there to help. 
One thing I want to point out is she is our advanced placement teacher. So she really does have the opportunity to help a lot of kids earn college credit. And this was just a stat that we put together. She's helped over 600 kids earned over 830 credit hours, college credit hours, which I think is absolutely amazing and such an accomplishment. And I have to say, her salted caramels that she makes at Christmas time are absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Christmas, you always hope she comes by with it. So I just cannot thank her enough for everything she's done at the high school. She's an absolutely amazing person um, and educator. We're very lucky to have her. So congratulations, Carrie. Congratulations to everyone. I think the crowd in the, in the room, and I know people are here for uh, some student presentations as well, but uh, this is one of the largest uh, crowds we've had, all for a good reason. So, And uh, teachers are the center of our district, and we appreciate all of them. But I think you heard some things tonight that resonated with many people in this audience as things that make the individuals that were honored uh, very special to not only kids, but parents and uh, the community as a whole. So congratulations to everyone. Um, it is, um, I, I, I can share in some of the stories that we heard as well. And I think that when you have people that have that passion every day, um, we feel good about our kids with them and we feel good about their influence on their peers as well as making our schools a better place um, when they leave than they came that morning. So congratulations again and um, thanks for all the support. It's wonderful, thank you. On behalf of the school board, we would like to congratulate all the teachers who were recognized this year. We would also like to encourage all the teachers throughout our district to continue doing the amazing job that you do. We appreciate the culture that you create in our buildings, the positivity, the smiles, and the fun that we see. So we're really excited to see how you produce these amazing students that we get to recognize every month and how we get to choose you every year for our Teachers of the Year. So again, congratulations. We would like to do a photo with all of the teachers of the year, all of the teachers and the board, and then we're going to do one more photo, and then we're going to do student of the month. So if you could just bear with us for a moment while we take advantage of this opportunity. So first, let's get all those teachers. Yep. You know, I was going to put a dress on, and then I thought, oh, I'll just be
Now I would like to reintroduce. Well, I'd like to reintroduce Mrs. Lewis, principal of Lansford High School, to present Student of the Month. Good evening again. I would love the opportunity to introduce two fabulous teachers in my building, Ms. Manza and Ms. Temple. Good evening. We would like to ask Carter Wright to join us at the podium as the Lamp Cruz High School English Student of the Month. I first met Carter last year, and then Ms. Manson and I were lucky enough to have him in our English 12 classroom this year. He is definitely not shy about his dislike of English and would rather be <laughs> anywhere um, than English class, anywhere he doesn't have to read and write. However, I have seen such a huge change in him this year. He comes in with a different attitude. There's a different responsibility and maturity. And as teachers, sometimes the, the kids that are most inspiring are those kids who don't love academics but find a love for it along the way. This year, it is very clear that he is reading the book. We are very shocked. And if you've been in an English 12 class second semester, senioritis is in full bloom. Um, but Ms. Manzo and I have noticed over the course of the semester, not only is he doing well academically, he has his best grade in English in high school thus far. He has an A minus. Um, but also, we hear him having conversations. We hear him explaining the themes of the book, things he couldn't get if he were just looking at spark notes. Um, so we have been very proud and very inspired watching him and his attitude this year, and he just wants to get things done. He's not procrastinating, just such a different student. So for those reasons, we wanted to recognize Carter Wright as our student of the month. Mr. Peter Dora from our award-winning art department at the high school. I got mine written down. A little more formal. Sorry. Uh, good evening, board members, Superintendent Edolf, distinguished guests. It has been my pleasure getting to know Nicole. To come up. Yep. Or Nikki, having served as her drawing and painting teacher here at Lance Cruz North, at Lance Cruz. In the classroom, she is an active participant in discussions, grasps complex, complex art concepts quickly. She has superb drawing and painting skills that are a pleasure for any art teacher to encounter. Nikki has taken a multitude of art classes while attending high school, photo, ceramics, painting, and drawing. The depth and breadth of these courses and her work is proof she is not limited to one artistic style or form. Nikki is an active member of NAHS and has participated in countless competitions and shows. Nikki has won awards at these competitions, such as High Merit in the Macomb Secondary Art Show held at the Anton Art Center, and most recently, a National Silver Medal in the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition. Nearly 340,000 works of art and writing were submitted in 2019 to the Scholastic Art Awards. Nikki's work was selected by some of the foremost leaders in visual and literary arts for her excellence in originality, technical skill, and emergence of personal voice or vision. Receiving a national medal places Nikki within the top 1% of all submissions. Since 1993, the award has celebrated teen artists and writers from across the country. Nikki is now a part of that legacy, joining the ranks of the celebrated alumni like artists Andy Warhol, Robert Indiana, Sylvia Plath, Truman Capote, and Joyce Carol Oates. 
and filmmakers such as Ken Burns. No matter what path Nikki pursues, we hope this recognition will open doors for her and inspire her to achieve new heights. This, along with her other academic accomplishments, reflect her strong artistic, academic, and leadership qualities. Nikki has brought so much to the school's art department, both inside and outside of the classroom. As a senior, she will be missed, but we wish her well on her future endeavors. With that, I present to you Ms. Nicole Johnson, Lance Cruz High School's Art Student of the Month. So we decide because this is our, we need it to be a little visual. So we have um, Liz's artwork going on here for you guys while we go. So I'm very excited to present Elizabeth Brost as our Lance Cruz High School North Art Department Student of the Month. Liz is our yes girl. Everything that is asked of her, her answer is always yes. When asked to bring project ideas to life, yes. When we ask her to try something new, yes. Assist others and help set up events, yes. And she's always willing to help us. Liz is a hardworking student, she's very talented, and we are so proud to call her our kid. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Thank you. All right. Also from our English department, Ms. Sheila Osaki, an inspiration to many of our students, also a sponsor for our diversity club. Please welcome Ms. Osaki. Okay, uh, 
I'm not going to apologize for the length, but I am going to apologize for reading a poem. Sorry. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you to Eric, the board, central administration, Kim, everybody, really, for allowing me to present um, and introduce you to this very special person tonight. So I'm Sheila Saki. I teach English and English as a second language at LCN, and I'm here to present my pick for student of the month. I'd like to invite up to the front Angelina Vita and her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Vita. So Angelina is third in her class and headed to Ann Arbor this fall, but I'm not going to list her many accomplishments. Instead, I just want to focus on why she's English Student of the Month. I'm going to humbly ask you to indulge me for a couple of minutes. I'm going to read a poem called O Me, O Life by the great Walt Whitman. O me, O life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, of myself forever reproaching myself for who more foolish than I and who more faithless, of eyes that vainly crave the light of the objects mean, of the struggle, struggle ever renewed, of the poor results of all, of the plotting and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless years of the rest with the rest me intertwined. The question, O oh me, so sad, recurring, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? So Walt Whitman is asking one of the great philosophical questions that plagues humans. What's the meaning of life? Unlike other philosophers and poets, he gives us an answer, and the poem ends like this. Answer. That you are here. That life exists and identity. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. Almost three years ago, we read this poem in class, and a few others that I have in here. We read it this year, right, ma'am? <laughs> um, when Angelina was, reading, was writing her college essays, she came back to this little poem to include it. In all of the information that filters into the minds of young scholars, it's so interesting that she remembered this poem, because this poem tells us that we can change the world. Change the world, really, in high school? Yup. Angelina is a student of the month in English because she recognizes the power of words of literature to affect change. She's the president of the diversity club of over 60 students. She's the driving force behind the first annual culture convention. She has taken words, made a creed, and reshaped the landscape of our school. Angelina is a bicultural Filipina in a fairly homogenous school, and she demanded that students, have, that students of other cultures have respect and value diversity. Mama and Papa Vita, I want to thank you for this gift of a girl. She has made Lance Cruz High School a better place, and Lance Cruz North High School and Lance Cruz a better place, and she has con contributed her verse, and I look forward, and we all should, to the many verses she has to come. Thanks again to the board and, and Superintendent Edoff and, and the community for being here. Uh, we are very lucky and fortunate to have our presenter from Panko, uh, Miss Anne Marie Duncan from our MST program. I'd like for her to come on up and as she comes up, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Anne Marie. She's, uh, she's been a part of our district for 25 plus years. 
Uh, she's been a fixture in the MST program for, for many, many years. Uh, all of our students who come through the program are fortunate to have Amory as a junior in pre-calculus, and the majority of them eventually have her as, also as a senior if they take uh, AP Calculus uh, BC. Uh, Amory takes teaching very, very personal, and, and what I mean by that is whether it's after school, coming in on weekends, uh, she, she wants so desperately for her students to not only grasp mathematics, but find a drive and a work ethic before they go on to the collegiate level. And I think that's evidenced by uh, last year's, her, her AP Calculus students, 92% of them uh, passed the AP exam with a score of a three, four, or five, which is out of a score of one to five, but 92% of them. And I think that's just an extraordinary statistic uh, when you look at AP testing. So uh, anne has got a couple students tonight to honor, and I'm anxious for all of you to hear about them. Good evening. I am an 11th and 12th grade math teacher in the MST program, and I'm, I'm nearing my 30. 30. I'm not going away. I don't want to go. <laughs> when it came time for me to choose Student of the Month, I approached Mr. Sable House with the idea that I hoped it was possible for me to recognize not one but two students. I felt that I had a situation that was unique to most. In the nearly 30 years I've taught in Lens Cruz, it's rare to witness the camaraderie that I see between these students who will soon stand beside me. It gives me great pleasure to introduce and recognize LCN seniors, Josh Heibach and Jake Pozar, two of MST's hardest working and dedicated help PC students. I'd also like to take a moment to introduce Josh's parents. Please stand, Jeff and Michelle Heibach. And Jake's parents, Frank and Jujana Pozar, and Sister Kate. Congratulations to all of you on this special recognition. As a calculus teacher, I've had the pleasure of working with many incredi incredibly talented young men and women but I've never witnessed two students who more consistently and diligently worked to master the, con <clears throat> excuse me, the content in calculus as these two. It hasn't been an easy road. As I'm sure you can imagine, calculus is ex an extremely challenging class and can be frustrating at best some days. I've had the pleasure of watching them overcome the hurdles they faced along the way and have witnessed firsthand each of them learning, growing, and questioning and ultimately having fun with one another. Jake and Josh are truly two peas in a pod. Attached at the hip, as they say. <laughs> like peanut butter and jelly. You get the point. They complement each other well and utilize this unique dynamic to problem solve and encourage one another. I often hear them go back and forth like an old married couple. <laughs> and I've even had to sell a few minor debates through the year. There is a friendly rivalry one that allows each to flourish. Josh and Jake are on a mission, calculus or bust. Each of them spends numerous hours after school in my classroom, multiple times per week, analyzing, comparing, debating, to the point that I often wonder if something's wrong when I see one without the other. They go beyond the walls of the classroom and reach out to other friends and even have tutors on their personal time. As their success has grown, so has their enthusiasm for the subject, and I see it more and more every day. They have every right to be proud of their accomplishments because they have come with some sacrifice. Each has overcome personal obstacles along the way, but I'm fairly certain that they feel it's been worth the tremendous amount of effort they've put forth. Both Jake and Josh are also involved in an organization called Mu Alpha Theta a nationally recognized mathematics fraternity similar to that of National Honor Society. Both are highly dependable and active in our chapter. They serve as mathematics tutors for the Panko Center and have also participated in math competitions as members of Mu Alpha Theta. Josh and Jake are true friends and true mathematicians. I'm thankful that I played a small role in their mathematical careers 
and cannot wait to see what the future holds for each of them. I owe you each a great big thank you for your perseverance, your commitment, and your determination, and for making teaching calculus so incredibly rewarding. Thank you. And to present the uh, instructor from the Pellerin Center, uh, Mr. Jeff Glombowski, the principal. Thank you once again for the time this evening to highlight excellence here in the district. I also want to thank the Board of Education for embracing uh, tradition and saving the best for last. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> to spare no time, I'd like to invite up one of our ELA teachers from the Pellerin Center. He's also a sponsor of our Go Green Club which has the highest marks of the MISD as far as our efforts towards cleaning our environment here in Las Cruz. So, Mr. Pat Corcoran. Hi, I'd like to uh, thank the board and the administration for sponsoring this. And all of you coming and supporting whoever is supporting, it's really wonderful. Um, I'll also tell you that I made a huge mistake in having the most rambling and verbose person, probably of all speakers, be last. So I did set a five minute alarm like on my phone. So I looked down to make sure that I'll stop at five minutes, I promise. I won't go on too many tangents, as I am already. Um, I'd like to welcome up Gabby Aguilera up to, uh, as the student of the month from Pellerin Center. Uh, At the Pellerin Center, we're a really small school, uh, usually around 250 to 300 students. And so we have a pretty small staff. We only have three English teachers. And I teach ninth and 10th grade this term. And we have two other English teachers. And I sent out emails to everyone, the whole staff, and said, you know, I'm going to go speak for Gabby. Do you guys have anything you want to say uh, about her? And then I got, you know, the same buzzwords across the board, all A's and one B, uh, super polite, super nice, pleasure having class. I was like, well, I could say the same thing too, but I'll tell you a little more personal um, relationship I have with Gabby and just as being a teacher in general. Uh, being a teacher is a lot like being a stand-up comic. Like you plan out this whole routine that you're going to come up and do this routine for 55 minutes or whatever, and you can realize that you rambled for 20 minutes and you're completely off track, or it bombed totally and the kids are half asleep and it's 10 minutes in. But I'm like a stand-up comic where you get booed off stage, like you're stuck in the room with the kids the rest of the time. So you have to tell about like your new dog that you just made up that you got, and like you can pull, you know, hopefully you can lie for another 20 minutes and then ask them about their dogs and do whatever else you need to do. Uh, but a lot of times, like I'll, you know, I'll know a lesson bombs, and I'll turn to Gabby, who's got a great sardonic humor. And I'll just give her a look and just be like, oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad one day. <laughs> or if I think things went well, Mr. Gombowski, like. You know, came by and did an evaluation, and I was like, that's pretty good, right? She's like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's not that bad at the time. Um, but I've had her for two years now, and one of the things that, you know, beyond just getting A's and B's, I'm sure I could bring her pre-SATs to her SATs and tell you how much she improved. 
not just having the class like bombing the class. When you're at home grading papers, you can tell if you bombed getting the material to them correctly or not by like how many D's and F's you're giving out. You're like, oof, like they can't all be this bad. Like I'm doing a bad job. Uh, but like at some point you stand back and you just get burned out. I think you just get burned out and you start thinking that like the kids are the enemy and it's us against them and you're in encampments after a while. And every once in a while you get a kid who come along with Gabby and you just have this idea of a student's a student and a person who grows. And you can see the writing grow over two years. And when I first got her, uh, you know, it was like, okay, I'm gonna pound this concept home, pound this concept home, and then pound this concept home. But now when I get her papers, and it's the same thing in class, when I'll sit down and I know like things are bombing, 40 seconds, and things are bombing badly. Uh, and I turn and I look to Gabby and say like, well, this is going bad, right? I'll get to her paper and I can enjoy seeing like, the growth that I've seen from her from last year to this year. And it's just a pleasure to see the growth, not just in a person every day in the classroom, but like on paper and like, at least she got it. At least like she got it and she grew and I can see it every day. And it's just wonderful to have a connection with her. And she's a great student and she's a fantastic kid. She makes coming to work every day really great. So, yeah, I mean, thank you. amazing accomplishment, right? If you think about how many students we have in our district, it's, it's 10,600 roughly. And to be the eight to come up here, uh, no matter what month it is, it's amazing to think that, right? Um, and I, I speak for the board in saying, and I'd be remiss in, in not mentioning a few individuals that helped you get here. Uh, you put in the hard work, you guys put in the de dedication as young women and as, as, as young men. And without these individuals in your life, that instilled those values of dedication and hard work, you wouldn't be here today. So tonight before you go to bed, please hug your parents, hug your family members just a little tighter, thank them, and just give them the love and support that they've given you. So congratulations again, not only to our, our wonderful, wonderful students, but also to our parents.